in this hip hop game, man, a guy who really put video to music. So tell us, Ralph, what you've been up to, how, how things going, and what's happening with you. Um, well, you know, thanks for having me, first of all, and uh, big up to you, the whole crew. You know, like, it's our 30th anniversary, so we've been, you know, doing a lot of different things. You know, big up to uh, the uh, House of Art Gallery, because we were at their spot uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we're back here now, kind of moving around and doing our thing. And, uh, and you know, they have a, a, an exhibit that's incredible, that's dedicated to the boombox, so big up to, to Rich and the whole crew over there at uh, House of Art, and you know, and that's, you know, that's what it's all about, you know, letting the young people remember, and, or if they don't know about it, learn a little bit about what we were doing back in the days when we first started this thing called hip hop. And, um, you know, and not, we're not talking about just rap music, we're talking about hip hop, you know, so the culture, you know, the lifestyle, everything that goes along with it. And, um, and you know, just, you know, just trying to, we're not trying to preach to nobody, we're just trying to let people know, you know, if you want to check out things like, you know, the Boombox exhibit, or you want to come out and listen to some, you know, original 45s or some, or some vinyl being played, you know, come on out and hang out. And this is, it's not, it's nothing complicated, you know? That's what's up. Um, well, I want to ask you, um, like, I know you're doing, uh, is it a video music box TV now? Is that what it is? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Big up, to, go, go right now. You know why you, why you listening to us? And uh, punch up video music box TV, um, and that's really a combination of just the stuff that's on my mind or where I go. Um, we just we're at Summer Jam um, with Hot 97, so we were behind the scenes. In fact, you know. Me and you people talking about, you know, Wu Tang Clan. Yeah. It's their, their 20th anniversary. Wow, it's you know? hard to believe. It's really hard to believe that Wu Tang has been around that long. And, I, I, you know, I'm one of, one of those cats who I, I think, and you as well, who always salutes a legacy as long as uh, Wu Tang's. And I think you, I, if I'm not mistaken, you, you directed one of the, or a couple of their videos as well, too, right? Yeah, I did um, um, what you call them, Cream, um, Cash Rules, everything around me for, for them. I did um, Incarcerated Scarface for Raekwon, um, Ice Cream for Raekwon, Heaven to Hell, which was funny. I was watching like MTV Jams the other night, and I was like 4 in the morning, I was working or something, and all of a sudden Heaven to Hell video came up. <laughs> so, you know, I was like, oh wow, Heaven to Hell. So, yeah, so that's, that's I have a, a, a history with them, and even helping them get their deal, you know, with Loud Records, we were part of that deal as well. That's what, what I was thinking is. When are, when, when are you going to be nominated or, or <laughs> for, for mm -hmm. an MTV award or, mm -hmm. or, or for some kind of... I, I think what we should do as a hip-hop community is get together and, and form our own little um, you know, rock and roll hall of fame or something like that here in New York, somewhere in the Bronx or, or somewhere in Harlem and put together a real committee that can really you know, honor our heroes, the, the public enemies. The, not necessarily, I'm not saying just everybody out of New York, but the culture itself and you know, get our own little thing going. You know, well, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, that would be dope. I think that we should, you know, it should, it should be, you know, it's very uh, interesting because you have like people that consider themselves the first generation yeah. of hip hop who could care less about anybody who came out <laughs> after '84, <laughs> and then you have the you know '84 to you know '87, '88, '89 who's like, you know, we don't care anybody who came after that. Yeah. So you have to have a segment of each one of those particular groups to kind of make it work. Because oh, yeah. if, if you just leave it up yeah. to the old school, we'll never get out of 82. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, I, I think that that would be the part of the, the, the cool thing about having a committee is that you would have, you know, maybe five guys that represent each generation. Right. And, and you make the board big enough and the money long enough to keep everybody you know, within the scope of what it is that we want to do. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think I think that would be incredible because there are so many, you know, unsung heroes. I mean, guys that were part of the scene that made it happen that you don't know, you know, they didn't have a record out, you know, they weren't, uh, you know, any big time producer or anything like that, but they were very important to the scene and to the movement. You know, like I tell people, I said, you know, back in the days, like we all knew each other, you know, even yeah. if you were from Queens, Brooklyn, wherever, the Bronx, you, you kind of knew Everybody that was into the scene, Absolutely. you know, so it wasn't that big. Now, you know, it's all over the place where, you know, you don't even have to know anybody. They can just be sitting in the studio somewhere and making hit records, and you've never met that person ever in life. Yeah, you send, they're sending each other. I think that's sort of a lost art, though, of what, what we came up with, is that you actually, you know, 
went to a studio and did, did your song with somebody. So I think a lot of that creative process has been taken out of the, the culture as well. You, actually, you got to meet somebody who you thought was dope on a song before you actually put something together with him. Yeah, you know? just, I mean, just going to a record store, you know, mm -hmm. that experience of going to the record store and you might, and me as a DJ, you know, I'd be in there, you know, looking for some music or buying some music and they'd be like, oh, Flash is over there. And I never met Flash because I'm not from the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm like, oh, that's Flash? Oh. <laughs> so I'm looking to see what Flash is buying. <laughs> what is Flash buying? Yeah. You know, he might be buying something that I don't know about. So let me let me slow up my little process here and move around and kind of, you know, both mess around and whatnot and then see what Flash is buying. You know, you know, but that's how, and then, you know, we start to know each other. So then we start talking and having conversations with each other about music, about this is hot, yo, you gotta listen to it. And then you listen, you know what, that is hot. And you're, you're Ralph, what you buying? I'm getting this, oh, really, who is that? And I'm like, hey, this one, my man. And you know, all of that type of conversation would be going on. And that was so, what was so incredible about the record store, you know? I mean, I'm talking about right here, you know, in, in, in Brooklyn, you know, in Queens, there were stores, you know, in Manhattan, you know, 40, you know, of course, you know, everybody knows the stores in Manhattan, you know, and then, Finding the guys that had the, you know, the break beats, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Just going through that process, meeting people on 25th Street, you know, so you can get that one. Yeah, absolutely. You know? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that, that's my era as well, yeah. so I, I, I can definitely appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But, I, like, I, I want to know some of your thoughts on, like, the culture as, as it exists today. What, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think that it's still culture to some extent. I think that everything is kind of, um, first of all, I think that most kids who are making records right now, they just want to be somebody, you know, at the end of the day. And I got that, you know. And, you know, they'll do whatever they can to be somebody, you know. And they front, you know, we fronted back in the day. You know, to make it look like it was something, and it really wasn't. And they do the same things now. Um, um, I think that part of the, the problem I have is that the originality part of it, a lot of times we don't see that. They bite off each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, if you're wearing that shirt, then I'm gonna wear that shirt. I'm but gonna I'm gonna get the same thing. Right, yeah. like, and that, we never did yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that was like not. Like, if he's wearing Jordans, I'm not wearing Jordans. Right, <laughs> nah, can't do that, can't yeah. do that. So, you know, that was a little different from our era. Um, and, you know, you know, that, I, I think, the, we, our, our heart was a little bit more into it. We never saw the money, so that wasn't an issue for yeah. us. Now, people have seen the amount of monies that have been made off of you this can thing. Actually, you can become super rich yeah. by making hip hop music now. Right, so now it's like, oh, I can get that Bentley if I do what Rick Ross did, yeah. or uh, what Jay-Z did, or you know, what, you know, and so that's the prize. The prize before was just being Getting that girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The prize was that girl, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> Let me go out with her. Yeah. That was the prize. <laughs> absolutely. I like it. And that's absolutely true is that, you, you know, kids nowadays, they see that there's actually, a, you know, a, a quote unquote reward behind there somewhere. And that's the sort of the, the, the achievement or the, or the goal that they're looking for. But 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 in that process, is it, some of the, um, like you said, the spirit, is that, is that lost? You know, the, the, the technique, the putting together a song, or, or, or you know, or, or, or even the message in the music, is that lost for you? Yeah, I think the message is going to be lost because it's coming from a different place. Um, but I think that the spirit is still the same spirit. You know, you want something that just is going to drive you somewhere and take you to a place where you can be happy. And we all want to just be happy at the end of the day. So, you know, that's always going to be the same. But but you know, you know, you might get that Bentley, and you might get all that jewelry and all that good stuff, and you still might not be happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's sustainable happiness. Right? <laughs> I think, but it, here, that, that leads me to the next question: Is hip hop sustainable in, in that sense? Can you find that, you know, sustainable happiness as far as the culture is where it stands now? Um, yeah, I can find a place. Yeah, I can find a place. You know, like I like ASAP Rocky. I like him. You know, I like um, um, a couple of artists that I hear out there that, you know, I hear them doing their thing. I might not like everything that they do, yeah, yeah. but I understand it. And, I, and sometimes I have to put myself in that place where they're at, mm -hmm. in that atmosphere, yeah. and, you know, and listen to them, you know, and go like, I like this. I like Joey Badass, you know. I like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you know, <laughs> I like that, you know. Yeah. And, and so you have to put yourself 
in that environment with those young people at that particular moment in time when that record comes on and then you understand it and you know that but this is the same way I felt when I first heard when I first heard Tribe or I first heard Dayla or I first heard KRS Uncle like That's what's up. Yo we here right now we rock my Uncle Ralph on the block here on beboxradio.com Capital T and the crew. My man four players in the building. Four players you got a little something to say? Uh, you know we always got the 